Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Today we're at the tri-state corner of Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Why might be this be interesting? Let's find out. Why might the corner of Wyoming Nebraska and Colorado be interesting. I mean, ultimately it is just a couple of lines on the map that intersect in a little T-shaped sort of deal. And yet uh, here I am in the middle of, well, <laughs> let's see, I, currently I'm in Colorado and now I will walk over here. I am in Nebraska. And then if I come and stand kind of in this corner, I am in Wyoming. Kind of interesting, isn't it? So, when people talk about adventuring and traveling around, they have all sorts of ways to measure it and scale it and, you know, put uh, stone markers at it. So, I'm going to talk about that experience a little bit. All these markers and high points and things that people do. Well, for this particular site is purely a geographic uh, or like a cart cart uh, cartographic cartographical I don't know uh, it's a map thing how about that so the intersection of 27 degrees north was it no 27 where is it yeah 41 NL and then uh, Colorado here of course some jerks have damaged the marker and then uh, that says 1474 kind of hard to read there and then this guy doesn't have much on it. Let me go read the plaque. How about that? So <laughs> th these things are just something that people chase around to find. It's actually pretty interesting. I mean, take the four corners where New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and uh, Utah intersect. I mean, that's actually a major attraction for people to go there. Now, again, it's just a theoretical construct on the map. And yet, it's a big thing. I mean, those four states exist. They have powers, I mean, all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, it's on a native Indian reservation. So, I mean, there's like a entrance fee and this big old stand, this huge plaque. I mean, it's pretty crazy, but let's check this out here. So the corner common, oops, yeah, the corner common to Nebraska, Wyoming on the Colorado state boundary. Oliver N. Chafee, U.S. astronomer and surveyor, established this corner monument August 17th, 1869 at, let's see, at intersection of the 41st parallel of north latitude with the 27th degree of west longitude west of Washington, D.C. Art Hendrickson and, or, yeah, Hen, Henriksen and Howard Keeler rehabilitated, rehabilitated the monument in 1981. Federal, state, and local organizations coordinated additional preservation in 1997. So, as you can see here, uh, should I stand on that? No, nah, I don't want to damage that thing. So, yeah, all right, I'd be a, do a travel channel and then wreck the things I'm trying to show people. Now, as you can see, this fence line literally resides on the line, you know, like Wyoming, Colorado, and the fence line over here resides on the line between uh, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Colorado. So this is literally the border between these three great states. Now, one of the things about doing this is that you can, uh, you can do these things with your family, especially the most interesting point is uh, I wonder if this is maybe the only place in the lower 48 where this is true or you know in the United States is that roughly what was it uh, two miles that way give or take is the highest point in Nebraska now one of the things is you don't want to come to one or the other points and then hike in between or drive in between because this is open cattle range it's also open bison range and and the private landowners don't want you walking out there. I mean, not that you're probably going to hurt the cattle, but you might disturb them. However, the bison are another matter. Cows tend to run off. They're they're relatively fraidy cat. Bison, woo boy, you get in the open range in bison, you walk around, 
And let me tell you, just recently in Yellowstone, some little girl got flipped. And 2015, some girl got gored and flipped. I mean, just, oh, don't do it. If you want to go to the point, which is called Panorama Point, and that's the highest point in Nebraska, just uh, over yonder, not that hill, but a few hills over a couple miles, you drive over there and make sure to th bring uh, $3 per person to visit because it is on private land. And you go out there and check it out, and that is the highest point in the state of Nebraska. Now, interestingly, you think, oh, Nebraska's flat, maybe rolling hills, how high could it be? We are over a mile high here. It's uh, like uh, the high point over there is 5,400 feet. I'm guessing this is 5,300 feet. I, I can't even tell. I mean, as you can see, the rolling hills are around here. But yeah, the, these locations are pretty interesting. Now, if you happen to decide to come to the Tri Point State, oh, I got like a farmer stand. That's sexy. Now, if you decide to come to the Tri State location, do note this is on private land, so I'm, uh, I guess I'm taking a little bit of risk here. I don't want to disturb the landowner's property. I don't want to disturb the windmill. I absolutely do not want to disturb the owner's cattle. So as soon as I come into the property, I drive nice and slow and calm. Cows weren't too anywhere near. You don't want to get real close and cause them to run and you know hurt themselves or stumble in a hole and you know god forbid they break their leg or something and like well you're gonna buy my cow for a couple thousand dollars there partner yeah you don't want to do that so i mean when you're doing these sort of activities and it is uh, the access is on private land is absolutely critical to be as utterly respectful of you can as you can because coming in here there, there's a there's a rope there's a sign that says private property and i'm like oh gosh but I see other people doing it. I'm like, well, that doesn't necessarily make it right. So you got to make your own uh, judgment call. Hopefully the owner doesn't come out here with a shotgun and <laughs> decide that he owns my truck now. I don't know. Hopefully not. Uh, got to be careful where he has a 30-06 with a 16 power scope. That would be bad. But I wouldn't suspect the landowner would uh, just go shooting people, especially because... I mean, it's such an interesting marker here. Let me uh, put my phone up there. Here, let me uh, let me tilt that out for you just so you can see it better. Hopefully, that's pretty cool, yeah? There you go. Very interesting to look at. So this is just one of those peculiar things as you travel around in your life and you have the opportunity to see different sites and locations is if you have the chance, I would utterly stop by and check this out. Now, what's really interesting is along this line to the, uh, that's uh, that's the north, right? North, south, Colorado. Yeah, the, 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 the Wyoming side of the road is actually paved, but the Nebraska side of the road is actually dirt now you know does that tell about funding and road maintenance and all that maybe i mean a nebraska corn husker state is uh, much more of an agriculture state i mean obviously there's a ton of grassland out here compared that to wyoming wyoming is much more of a mineral and mining state so Maybe there's more money there. I mean, there's certainly more people in Nebraska. There are millions more people in Nebraska and way more people in Colorado even. I mean, in Wyoming, there's just over 500,000 people. I mean, there's like hardly anybody. I mean, this is like, if, if you want to come to the Big Empty, that's pretty cool. Now, friends I've had from Europe, they actually like to come to these places of just vast emptiness because to them you know yeah, there's a village every couple of kilometers or you know maybe tens of kilometers or just a few miles but here in colorado nebraska wyoming boy if you want to experience the big empty and get away from it all these sites are definitely it so being able to see check out that marker there yeah pretty cool just to prove that you're here you know take your selfie check it out uh, it, these things are neat family adventures just remember always be respectful of people's private property well worth that and uh, there's some hay bales and silos over there there's a huge you know huge wind farm system over there and man those machines are big really big 
the cows are just mooing like hey quit blabbing <laughs> so hope you've enjoyed this little adventure to the tri-state corner of colorado nebraska and wyoming uh just to drive safely and if if you happen to uh get to the windmill and you just have a car unless you can drive around that windmill leaks water quite a bit it's overflowing or whatever it does that's where the cows drink from and that mud is deep if you decide to drive through that mud and you only have a two-wheel drive you will very likely get your vehicle stuck and then uh let me tell you you're gonna be in real trouble so definitely be mindful of the dirt if you uh, aren't confident about getting around the mud patch right where the windmill is because the windmill pumps the water from the ground to the trough for the cows but then that overspills and then makes the ground muddy just walk uh you know I, I don't see any bison around here but again be respectful of the cattle be careful but do not get your vehicle stuck the the landowner probably tolerates this but boy you get your vehicle stuck it might cost you a little bit to get that sucker out so definitely be mindful of that so hopefully you've enjoyed this little adventure to the tri-state corner of Colorado, Wyoming, and Nebraska. My name is Aaron Linstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Please like and comment on my video. Scroll to the bottom, leave me a comment, let me know how I'm doing, and you know, give me some ideas for other things to do to take you to some wild and different places. Thank you very much for watching.